Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Morgan and this is My Glorious Leaves. Um, I haven't made a video in quite some time. I kind of lost touch with plants and collecting and um, lately I've been falling back in love with my collection. I actually moved across the country so I did want to make some kind of content about that um, but it just didn't fit in my plans because I've just been so busy. So as you can see I kind of have this awesome plant shelf behind me and so I thought today we could do like a little bit of a tour of my collection a kind of update on the sulfur because I know I had a lot of requests to show you guys how the sulfur has been helping my plants um, I did wash it off recently um, but I did find that it did boost the growth in some of the plants but after more research because obviously this is all just kind of stuff that I find out and want to try and want to share with everybody um, I did find out that using sulfur for too long can inhibit plant growth um, just because it does create like a barrier on the leaf and it impacts the ability for that leaf to photosynthesize and create energy for the plant so for short-term use it's great it is awesome for removing pests and stuff and I think I'll still um, apply it to my soil and everything like that and I will you know apply it to the leaves for plants that do have issues with um, growing but I don't think I'll leave it on for as long as I did I think I left it on for like six months or something like that um, but anyway so I'm super excited because I have something that I have heard a lot about from a lot of other plants youtubers and things like that and Santi grow lights I heard that they are really really great and I'm really having so much fun styling plants around my home I'm out of my student house and just you know I have a full house that my boyfriend is uh, learning to love all the plants ever and he actually has some plants himself so anyway today I thought we could try to install these Santi grow lights and hopefully it uh, is pretty easy I'm gonna try to do it on camera Cool, there's a five-year warranty on these light bulbs, so that's amazing. I got six of them. They come in a pack of two, and I really wanted to get the puck lights, um, the ones that, like this, that are just going to stick up on the top. So um, I did get them on Amazon, um, and they do come oops, with some little zip ties if you need. And then it's just got 3M tape here, which is awesome. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to, I might sand down the wood a little bit just to make it stick a little bit better. And I'm not sure how they connect together because I was told that they can all be connected together, but it kind of just looks like each one has to be installed separately. So that's kind of annoying. And so there's like nine cubes on this shelf here. And I'm thinking of doing just like the top six. Each of these, I think, because they came in a set of two, all together it was like $125 for the three. And I can't really put them in the middle because the wood isn't centered. So that kind of sucks. I'm also going to have to get um, a little power bar here because there's not enough plugs. Each one is its own plug. So that kind of sucks. I was not expecting that. Maybe I should have read the ad more accurately. I don't know. But I feel like it's just such a big cord to have. It's like, it's pretty big compared to my other one. It's like at least double. I don't love that. And depending on if this one sticks, uh, like how well it sticks, I will sand the areas first for now it seems to be sticking really well awesome love it okay pretty bright i love and i love the overhead thing because like these are just like going at them and like not that strong i don't know the wattage on this but probably not that much Okay, 
So I'm going to turn this one off. Okay. So that's the grow lights. There was an option for dimmable ones, but the dimmable ones were like $10 more. I don't know if it would have been brighter than this. Maybe I should have just splurged for that because... I don't know. I feel like this is pretty bright. Very happy with it. Okay, let's get on to the plants. Okay, here. so my house is kind of a mess because we're still getting moved in and organized. Um, but here we go. Um, this is my Pothos Enjoy that I've had for quite some time. Pearls and Jade, I think they're the same. Um, this is my Epipremnum Marble Queen, my um, Anthurium Marquianum, get her in the light there so you can really see how gorgeous she is. We have my, um, oh my gosh, Northern Pine. He is stunning in this Berg's Pot, which I can't find the saucer for. Um, my Philodendron Billetier. I'm really like not great with my plant names anymore. So this is like really putting me on the spot. Um, this is my Hoya Matilde. I love her so much. Um, this is still some of the sulfur that I didn't get off because as I was like washing it off, it was kind of watering the plant and she didn't really need to be watered at the time. So I only did some of it. So the next time she really dries out, I'm going to do it. But she has grown quite a bit. Um, all of these stems are like new growth from the sulfur. So the sulfur was on up until like these two leaves and then all the rest like these two and this is all new. Um, this whole strand is pretty new. Um, one of these strands is really new. This one, this one, not very new, but no, not very new. Uh, and then this one, nope, but this one is new. So I think it did overall like improve the growth on this one. This is my little fertilizer water I have mixed up. This is my philodendron adabapuensi. She's not got the most red leaves and she's coming with pretty small leaves. This is my Philodendron Glorious. Um, I got her as a cutting in late March, early April, and she's already giving me this lovely new growth point. I'm super excited about that. I was really nervous about some of these plants in the move and how they would do. So I think some of them aren't doing great. Like this Warqueenum had like three leaves and they kind of died off, but she is still in her same soil. Uh, I believe that she was imported in. Like I got it from a shop that um, like does imports and sells them. So um, this one was not, a tissue culture one and i think it just lost a couple leaves just probably because of the stress of the move um this is my hoya serpents which i love so so much this one i also put the sulfur on and like a whole bunch of this is all new growth here so it really helps this plant um and then i actually took cuttings from it this morning which i'll show you that's in my other thing and these are all my rocks and shells and stuff that i've collected on my travels i'm still gonna find like a better way to display them because i think my boyfriend thinks it looks a little bit messy having them everywhere i love them i love seeing them but i think like maybe some like dishes or something you know so they're not just like everywhere and they don't look like gravel but anyway this is my hoya sigillatus she was in my little terrarium thing for quite some time. The mother plant was like dying and I just, it was weird because the bottom part like close to the soil was rotting. So I just took cuttings of like the top, the growth on the top that was like still okay. Um, and surprisingly they came back, they were pretty flimsy. But so this is like three cuttings. I accidentally broke one leaf off yesterday here, but this one is still gorgeous. This one's got one little baby and maybe another little baby on the way. And this one has two little tiny babies on the way. Ugh, I love watching Hoya leaves just get so big from like being so small. Um, and this is just such a cute little plant. So I just potted it up yesterday and she's loving life. 
Um, this is my Philodendron Majestic. She is very majestic. This is one plant I always, always wanted, but they were like hundreds and hundreds of dollars back in the day, um, like during COVID and everything. And like, I can't really get a good, like, you can't really see her, there we go, like her patterning, but she is so gorgeous. I think some of this burning happened like on the trip. So I'm hoping it wasn't like the two, the car that was like too hot the whole time. But so I got her as a cutting as well for only like $15. Um, she was amazing. And I got her like literally the same day I got this one. And she already has this new growth on the way. You can see she's coming out with a new leaf. So excited for that. This is my Hoya um, Sarawak. I think it's cream flower. It has done absolutely nothing in the three, four years I've owned it. I got it as a cutting, unrooted in 2020. It is very rooted, um, but it has done absolutely nothing. I did put sulfur on it. The sulfur did not affect this guy. It does have some like nubs here. Um, but like I see a little tiny green nub there kind of if i can get it to focus if I can get it to focus there's a little green nub there that might become something but uh other than that yeah but i still love her love the leaves it's like you know been super happy and loving life um yeah hopefully these grow lights maybe help give some extra light because i know like my plants have just gone through so much stress with all the moving back and forth from a student house and like just you know not having enough light having too much cold like just everything so honestly the fact that some of these have like lived so long is really amazing um and then this is my philodendron uh heteracium variegated um that my friend sydney gave me as a one leaf cutting um a while ago i think no, the original leaf died off, but this was like the second leaf it grew, and then it grew some others that maybe fell off or something because the stem's like empty there. And then these two gorgeous leaves. And then I just cut off these two like about a month or two ago and then rooted them and put it back in. And I'm going to keep doing that so I can get it like really full and bushy. Um, but I'm really happy with how that plant is growing, doing super, super well. Okay, down here. This is my Hoya Svetlana. This was a Hoya I really, really wanted because I really loved the like thick textured leaves. I loved the splashing. I loved the like ruffled edges and the shape. I just thought it was so interesting. And I love like just really cool shaped Hoyas. That's like, love it. Um, hasn't done much for me. I think, I think it came with this stem, to be honest. And then I think maybe it grew this much and there is a growth point at the top. So crossing my fingers for a growth there, to be honest, I think I may have like chipped it off. Cause if you can kind of see, like it looks like it was kind of chipped off. So maybe it got damaged in the move, but I got this plant, shoot, maybe like a year ago, I think at uh, one of the plant shows. Um, so it hasn't done much for me, but I do really love the plant. Yeah, this is my Hoya Velosa Cow Dang. Um, that's what it sold to me as. I've seen them look very different and have very different shaped leaves. So I'm pretty sure this is the Cow Dang. There's also like a whole bunch of different versions of it. This is what I believe to be flat mite damage. And this was like one of the main reasons on this plant that I even started like looking into sulfur for plants because yeah, the, these leaves were pretty ugly. I think I cut off the other one. Um, but yeah, so that's just damage. There's no more pests anymore. We're all good. But yeah, after I put the sulfur on, I think I put the sulfur on this leaf and on this leaf. And it grew these three. These three really nice leaves. Some of the like stuff you're seeing is kind of the sulfur and some is the little hairs. I do have to like go in with a little cloth or like a little q-tip and sort of clean out all the little ridges because these plants are a little bit tougher to get every single thing but i do really like that plant um and yeah i'm really happy it's growing for me and that's just a little matilde that i accidentally broke off the plant but it had a node so I just stuck it in there this is my and i'm so sad i broke the main leaf off because it was the biggest most beautiful leaf um, but this is my philodendron spiritus sancti 
I got it from Heman's back in Ontario for only $60. I remember back in COVID when like the big ones were like $10,000 or more, like it was absolutely insane. And then they were selling seedlings for like 2,000, 1,000. And I honestly just never even considered owning one because they were just so expensive and unattainable. And then one day I was at the garden center and I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, no way that this is like for sale. Um, honestly, it looked so much better when I got it. I feel like I've done this plant a very big disservice. It did not like traveling. It did get bumped around a bit. The leaves are kind of delicate. So I feel really bad. Um, but I have high hopes for, um, for lots of growth coming this season. I'm also gonna like repot it cause the soil doesn't look very good. Um, but yeah, so this leaf is still like really cute. I think I love the little ears. I think it's adorable. Love it. Okay, moving on. This is my Hoya latifolia also from my friend Sydney. She gave it to me as a one leaf cutting. I think it was this one. This is the same big guy. I'm so happy that it hasn't even well. Okay. It has lost a few leaves because I've been not careful when it is growing a new leaf and it's really, really delicate when it's in that like orangey yellowy kind of stage where you're like oh my god is this like you know a good leaf or not it was like that so it was really delicate and it broke off it also could have been like a bad new leaf that just like wasn't having enough nutrients or something and just wasn't doing well but anyway so these leaves are a little bit lighter because I believe these are probably like the leaves from import or something and then this leaf came in kind of damaged but then we got this one and she is so big and beautiful I just love the big shiny leaves. I'm just obsessed with it. I know it's such like a simple, simple Hoya, but I just love like big leaves and I love just how structurally pleasing it is. I just love it. So happy with it. This plant I am obsessed with. It is my Philodendron Mommy Eye or Mame, however you say it. I have had this plant for at least three years. It has grown back at least four times now. I'm so, so pleased with it. Um, I shared a couple photos on my Instagram the other day of just how much it's been growing. So it actually has three separate growth points, um, which are kind of buried so you can't see. But I think on the end here is like one or two. And then this one where they're getting big is like the third one. Um, but yeah, it just, so it keeps, it kept drying out because I kept going on vacation and it didn't get water or just like, you know, going home for the holidays in a student house and it really lacked the water. really didn't like it. It kept dropping its leaves and going back to nothing. And then it kept coming back. I never got a super huge leaf yet. Like I haven't got it to grow back to a full plant, but it would always like put out a growth point and then put out a leaf and then die. And so I was very sad about that, but I tried my best to do a, like a wet stick propagation, which can go really well for me or it can go really poorly. Like a lot of the times they just rot. I just don't have great luck with stuff like that. Some people can put them in like enclosed containers and the humidity does not rot them and it's great. And then I do it and it just rots. So I think it just honestly depends on the plant and things like that, but it was in my little like closed terrarium and it just loved it. It spreaded three growth points. It was just insane. There's even a new leaf coming in under there if you can see. So I just love the resilience of this thing. I'm gonna try to keep watering it. I know it's in a small pot, so it's gonna dry out faster. I'm gonna have to keep a better eye on it. Hopefully she won't die again, but do love her. Yeah, gorgeous. And then this is just some cuttings from my Pothos Enjoy, my Epipremnum Enjoy, that um, were sitting in water for like far too long. I think they just really lacked nutrients. They started to look really sad. So I potted them up and it looks okay. Hopefully it'll like fill in. Some of these leaves look beautiful. A lot of them, they were in water for like, I'm embarrassed to say like probably like a year or so it, without nutrients supplemented. So they just were not doing great. And I was like, you know what? You need some soil. Okay, moving on. I have this Hoya um, Freckles Splash, Hoya Carnosa Freckles Splash. I love this thing. This thing grows like a weed so fast. Love it. And a lot of like splashy Hoya or like variegated plants don't grow that fast just because of the variegation. 
Um, it like impacts the plant's ability to photosynthesize because it's like less green, which is where the chlorophyll is, which is where they do the photosynthesizing. But anyway, um, so this plant, I'm gonna pull her out because she is just so pretty. Hi, newbies. Um, she was a two leaf cutting when I got her unrooted. I got her the same time that I got this plant here and she is still doing great. Um, yeah, she was like a two leaf cutting and just like kind of went off. I did put sulfur on her up to just these bottom ones, I think. And then she got like all this new growth within the past little while. Although that kind of looks like sulfur, so I'm kind of confused. But yeah, got a lot of new growth and I'm really happy with it. I love splashy Hoyas, and this one's like a really affordable one too. Um, I know a lot of plants are like coming down in price and becoming more affordable, which is why I've kind of splurged on a few plants lately, just because I wanted to add them back to my collection. I was a little bit upset that, you know, some of my favorite ones had died and I hadn't really taken good care of them. And this one is a Hoya chicken farm. Um, I really like the leaf patterning. It is kind of like a yellowy green. I don't know if the leaves are like yellowing and dying, they don't look great. Doesn't look great. I did have, like, I did cut the plant in half, and I believe this was the bottom. Don't know where the top half is. Maybe left it at home. Oops. And then this is a Hoya Larissa. Um, it was bigger, and then the leaves got burned last summer, so I had to cut it down. And then I guess some kind of damage happened where the leaf, like, bent. But she did recover. Like, they, it kind of sealed itself over, which is really cool not a lot of plants can do that so now it like doesn't bend anymore i'm gonna stop messing with it so yeah i'm gonna show you my little plant shelf here so pretty i'm really obsessed with this i found this on facebook marketplace i got a really good deal for it um like they made it and there's these like cute concrete kind of slabs and i just think that it is so cute i love it okay Sorry for all the clutter. I'm still putting things away. Um, and I really need to clean this table because these flowers are losing their petals, but they are so gorgeous. My boyfriend got these for me when I arrived in British Columbia. So cute. Um, okay, so starting over here is this Ficus Elastica. I forget the like rubra something that it's called. Um, my landlord actually got this for my boyfriend and I, and it is the cutest thing. You have to find like maybe a little bit of a better place for it, but it is so gorgeous. And I've always wanted one of these, but I just honestly never bought one, but they're really structurally beautiful. Just love it. I love the thick leaves, love the dark leaves. Super cool. Then I have, oh, maybe it'd be easier to go from the other side. Okay, so this is my philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy. Um, I got her at a plant show in Ontario in like April sometime. All of those damage, unfortunately, is from the trip. It was really hard to bring these moss poles like across the country in a car. My car was absolutely packed to the brim. Um, so I'm really sad about some of the damage there. The lower leaves are like, okay. Um, but she's growing amazing. She put out the top two leaves since I got it and I bought her for like, I don't know, $25, I think. Super, super cute. I love it. Then this is the Monstera Albo I got the other day, um, like last week, one day. I really, really love it. I had an Albo once and it wasn't great when I got it. It didn't have great roots on it and stuff and it just suffered. I don't know why, but it just like up and died. It really didn't last long at all. Um, it was already browning like within like a week. So anyway, I got this new one, which is super, super gorgeous. Um, I was debating getting this other one that had a lot more white, but it had so much white that I was worried that it just wasn't gonna grow. Um, so this one is like, rooted in this cup and I think I'm gonna pot it up maybe like I just watered it yesterday so maybe in like a few days um this aerial root has grown so much even just since I got it it was only like this short and now it's like already growing like I'm having to like push it down into the cup but anyway I really just love the variegation on it it's more minty than pure white um I do really like pure white there is like a bit of it 
So I'm hoping the new growth will have some pure white, but I could also always pot it up with another one that does have pure white. But at least for now, it really satisfies my need for an elbow and I love it. This is my Pilea peperomioides and my dad got it for me for Valentine's Day a couple years ago. And I have to tell you, like literally just a few weeks ago, it was looking very, very poor. It was really not doing well. The leaves were all floopy and just small and not great. And it has honestly grown so much since I've got it here. Like these grow so freaking fast. I had to like stake it up and I'm gonna find a little bit of a better way to do it maybe because it doesn't look great, but I just love it. And I think that it's so cute that it really started doing well once I brought it to my new home. It's kind of like a sign that like, you know, everything's happening for a reason and everything's like just happy and good and I love it. This is my boyfriend's Drosera Sundew. Um, it looks so cool and it's growing a lot. Yeah, that's his. Some of these are kind of dangly, not really sure. We're gonna kind of do some research on that because I've never owned one of these, but he loves it. And then this is his cactus. Super cute. And this is my avocado that I'm growing in my little, oopsies, my little frog pot that I painted. And it's just so cute. Love it, I keep just turning it because it's like, keeps, you know, turning back from the sun. And this is my little container here. I have a Scandapsis Silver Lady that I've had for a really long time. It did at one point when it was in my um, terrarium that had my frog in it and everything, it was doing really, really well. Um, and then I cut it and it literally did nothing. I looked at it yesterday when I was like repotting this thing, um, or just like moving plants around and stuff and it had no roots at all. So I don't know, maybe she just wants to stay, but she's like not browning or anything and she looks great. It's just, you know, just chilling. So whatever. Um, and then this is a Begonia Sarawak, I believe. I was really worried because I actually bought it from someone locally here in BC and I brought three of these begonias back to Ontario and the other two died, unfortunately, um, like shortly after I brought them home. I hadn't brought plants on planes and stuff before, but I was pretty confident with it being okay because it was like, they were just gonna be in cups in my carry-on. Um, but maybe there was something that they didn't like and it just wasn't very happy. I don't know. This one wasn't looking great until recently. Um, but she's looking better now. These are getting a little bit bigger, being a little bit happier. This is the Hoya Serpens that like, I broke one leaf off by accident today, but it had like a note. So I was like, oh, I'll just propagate it. And then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna propagate a couple more. Cause um, that one came as a one leaf cutting to me as just like an extra from like a plant I bought off Marketplace. And yeah, it's grown like all those leaves that you saw over there. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep propagating it and making like a big one. Cause it's like literally my favorite plant. I don't know what it is about the tiny little leaves that are like bumpy and like fuzzy, but I just love them so much. And then this plant I'm absolutely obsessed with, the Begonia Chloristicta Red. Um, I've always wanted one of these, like the red or the green, to be honest, like in the store, they both looked like pretty much the same. They both kind of came in kind of red. Um, but I guess as they harden off, like this one gets more dark and the other one has like less contrast between the two, but I just absolutely loved this. And I accidentally got a little bit of soil on it when I was like moving things around. So it did get a little bit dirty, but yeah, doing well in there. I just got it like last week gorgeous um yeah that's it for this little terrarium here and then this is my orchid it is a papiopedium delinatii from roehampton orchids um it is i believe the only orchid i have left in my collection currently i did have a couple orchids that i left at home for my mom to take care of i really couldn't take that many plants with me um, but I really love this one. It's been super resilient, no matter how much it has like completely dried out. Like this is just moss on top of like Leca pretty much at the bottom, um, like orchid bark and stuff. No matter how many times it's dried out, it just has done nothing. It has never lost a leaf. It has just done great. It hasn't like grown a whole lot, but it has just like loved life. So loving it. Just 
killing it. Roehampton Orchids, absolutely amazing. If you're in Toronto or Ontario, please check them out. They are awesome. I filmed a tour last year at their shop and I felt really, really bad because I lost the footage. Um, I filmed it on my phone and my phone got water damage and I lost all the footage. Um, and I felt extremely horrible, especially because they gifted me a few different orchids and I believe this was one of them. So I'm really glad that at least one of them survived because I was so, like this was like last year and I was so, so, so determined to try to grow orchids. I just fell in love with them. I really wanted to like plant an orchid terrarium and stuff. And I guess I just didn't have the right knowledge to take care of them, the right, you know, um, environment and everything. And so I was really upset that I lost that footage because they had gifted me so many beautiful orchids. Um, but they're lovely, wonderful people. I have um, known them since I bought off of them at when they were just an Etsy shop. And so it really hits close to home because, you know, I started as just an Etsy shop as well. Um, and now they have like a brick and mortar store in Toronto, which is absolutely amazing. It's a really, really cool store. Um, so definitely check it out if you have a chance. Um, They're wonderful. And then I think this is like, this has got to be probably my favorite plant. Um, I just, so it was three leaves. <laughs> And I don't know what happened. I think it may have had thrips at one point. I was spraying it for whatever it was. I think it was thrips. I'm not super good at realizing what pests are and when I have them. I like don't really know. And then I treat it like maybe when it's too late. I don't know. But um, usually like I think they go away. The plants usually do okay. They either completely die or like they just stay the same and then it's fine. So that's what happened to this one. Um, so it was three leaves, lost the other two, so I only had this one, um, and then it just grew this one recently, um, Monstera Aurea, by the way, and then I just bought this other Monstera Aurea that I potted with this one on Marketplace, which is this gorgeous big leaf, and this gorgeous big leaf. And the variegation on this one looks a little bit more yellow and creamy than this one. This one, for some reason, looks a little bit white in this lighting. Maybe just especially compared to this one, that's definitely more of a yellowy, creamy color. Um, but I think I'm going to try to just, like, I don't know, do something so that they're not, you know, covering each other. But I think, like, as they get sorted, it'll be really good. They'll be really nice and bushy. Um, and this plant did have a lot of, like, yellowy variegation on it initially. So hopefully she'll grow back with more variegation. The stem is like super variegated, if you can see. Like that's like really variegated. And then the variegation on the stem of these like newer ones is like not as prominent. So like this is the new growth and it's not super prominent, but it's also like a baby. And we also have a new leaf coming. So I'm so excited. I hope it like sizes up pretty quickly. There's not too much variegation on this leaf. And this one's only like, you know, half. These are all really only kind of like half, but I still really love it. Monsteras are like literally my favorite plant. I really want to get like a really big, nice one because I had a really big, nice one. And oh my God, I gave my friend a cutting when it was like one leaf rooted cutting and she grew it into this gorgeous Monstera that's like six feet tall with massive leaves, like literally like dinner, like like two feet, like just massive size. Um, I'll put a picture in if I can but and I'm like how the heck did you do that but her house gets insane amount of light like she's so so lucky like we are in a basement apartment right now so the fact that we're getting this like this is all natural light I have no supplemented lighting right now other than like the girl lights obviously so like this is like really really good to be getting this light all day long um so I'm hoping this is enough for the plants seems to be okay at least they're like right on the windowsill. Like we luckily have this like lovely windowsill that just goes all the way around. So it's like pretty, pretty awesome. Um, and then I have this um, Monstera Silta Picana. I gave it to my friend when it was literally just two little leaves and she grew it into this whole thing, which it ended like there. And then, so it was like, this tall like it was like really really big and then I cut it in half and I took the top half and I kept the top because I really loved these like big leaves we unfortunately had a casualty while we were on my trip and we lost the two 
big beautiful leaves that had the fenestrations and stuff already i was so excited for that but they'll come back they'll come back there's already new growth points here so she's okay um but yeah my friend even grew like a whole moss pole for herself she is like so good at not cutting her plants i think i'm getting better at that but she just like lets them grow whereas like i am like oh my god i can cut it and no 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 no, no. I am going to try to just let them grow, let them enjoy life. So yeah, let's just silt a pecan. Silt a pecan. And then we have my Syngonium Albo, which isn't really Albo. Um, the same friend, Lauren, she, I also gave her this as like a two leaf cutting and she grew this like massive moss pole. It did, it was super bushy here. And I think the leaves just got damaged in transit. Like you can see like where some of them like broke off, which was so, so sad. Um, but I also did cut it because it grew up and then it grew, she had it like fall back down and grow up a second time. There's like two main stems. So it was pretty bushy at one time. Unfortunately, yeah, we lost some leaves in the move and like this one's kind of yellowing, but I did propagate a few of them. I cut them to see if I could get the white to come back um, and I'll show you those now. Okay, so this little window is super cute. These are my um, Syngonium Aurea cuttings. They aren't super variegated as you can see they're a little like they have a little bit of variegation but like i wouldn't really call them a syngonium albo like they just don't really look like it and it kind of sucks because like the ones like the cutting i gave her was super super variegated and mostly the time these really hold their variegation pretty well um but so i have a bunch of these cuttings in here just rooting and i'm going to put them all back on that pole and hopefully get it big and bushy again um and then just a little bit of these flowers because it's just so cute and then this is like one I'm super, super obsessed with, Skindapsis um, Satin, variegated, Oreo, Skindapsis. There's a thing, there's a word, in, but it's got like the really thick velvety leaves. Um, and then it's just super gorgeously variegated. I bought like a full plant of it and then I cut it and gave my friend some and I was going to give my mom some and then maybe sell a piece just to kind of pay for it because she was a pretty pricey one but I just love it so much like it's just stunning look at that sorry for the lack of light like I really should have turned the lights on but they're really bad overhead lights and I just hate that um so she's curling a little but I think she's doing good my boyfriend's bike and we have his Pylea Moon Valley um, that is just doing spectacular. It was like a tiny little plant from Ikea when I got it for him and like super tightly packed in there. And it's just like popping off, man. Doing amazing, loves life. And then this is his Alocasia Silver Dragon, which is so cool. We got this for like literally $10. Um, it was such a steal because they used to be so freaking expensive. I remember they were like $200 um but yeah so this leaf this one leaf isn't doing amazing but like it's grown a lot we also repotted it and put like the little corms separate so this one's growing a lot so it's this one so we got a bunch of new growth points and she is doing amazing okay so that is all the plants that i have in my collection um it is a lot smaller than the collection i used to have for sure um, but I really love not having like too many plants, plants on every single surface, too cluttered, too close together. So many other problems that come with having plants like way too crowded. Um, so I really love just downsizing, picking my favorite plants, taking care of those. But yeah, so I think that's everything. Thanks so much for coming along with me to put my grill lights up and checking out my collection. I'm really happy with, you know, how my plants are looking in my new space. Um, and yeah, I'm just looking forward to growing all my plants and doing other planty things. So thank you so much again for coming along with me and I hope you have a great day. Bye.